I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today I'm back with my very special Land Rover Discovery XD. In the last video, I got the engine to finally run, but the transmission was leaking all over the place. Today, I'd like to start by replacing the transmission lines, and then we'll see how far we go to getting this thing drivable. Before I start removing the lines, I'm going to drain all the transmission fluid out of the transmission through this drain plug here. That's not a good sign. It's tightening up like the part of the bolt that's on the inside of the transmission is corroded or something. Let's just hope it's got some gunk on it. And now it's free. Always push against when you have your drain plug. That way you don't make a mess when you're trying to untighten it. There's a little bit of stuff on the end of that, but I don't think it looks too bad. There are three hoses to this system, and this particular discovery is going to be a little harder to replace them than a normal one. These two lines right here are the ones that are rusted and they run parallel to the engine. They run from the transmission up to the oil cooler or from the transmission to the radiator. There are hoses permanently connected to them and then they convert back to line right before they connect up to where they're going. There's also a third hose right here, and this goes from the cooler to the radiator. And the thing that makes replacing these lines a little more difficult on a Land Rover Discovery XD is that the XD has this giant skid plate assembly here. That blocks access to the cooler. And this big bracket that holds the skid plate on the left side of the vehicle blocks access to replacing this line here. I'm going to remove the skid plate This bolt here also holds the front bumper on. These lower bolts right here go through the brackets for the steering on this side. If you had a right hand drive, it would go through the steering on the other side. So they go right through that bracket right there, that's the nut that's spinning on the other side of that. Some of these bolts are really stuck, so I'm going to use my bolt buster. And instead of using a torch to heat them, this uses electricity to heat up the bolt. It has a little coil that you put around the bolt head or the nut that you want to heat up. And this will safely get the bolt red hot without using a flame. Bolt's starting to get hot. I'm going to turn the light off so that you can see it. Now, hopefully the temperature has broken this bolt free. There we go. It's a very long bolt, so it's getting stuck inside the spacer and other things along the length of it. The skid plate is pretty heavy, so I let it come down on this. I don't think when it came loose, I did have to yank on it a little bit to get that to pop down. I don't think I would have caught it. I think it would have ended up on the ground if I didn't have a little bit of help.
Like I have really good access to the lines now. I don't think anything else has to come out. I'm going to start removing the lines on the transmission side first. That way I can bring them down, let them hang, and let all the fluid that's still in these lines drain out into a pan. Along the way, there are a couple clips that hold them to the engine. So once those are done, I can let them hang down underneath the car. The two lines that run from the front to the transmission are now in. You can see you can do that without taking any of the exhaust or cross member out. You can also get this little line that comes over here and around here. That can be removed without taking the fan or the fan shroud out. So if you have the correct tools, you can get up there and reach everything. Look at how bad these crusty old lines were. They were just rusted clear through. One of the lines was rusted on so bad that it had to be cut so a socket could be put onto it. This is the one that was on top of the transmission. All of the others did come loose though after soaking them with a lot of penetrating oil. I am thinking since I'm here and everything's easy to get to right now, changing the oil filter and the oil in the engine. It definitely is going to need it. Everything's back together now. The transmission has been filled with oil. I think that was eight quarts of ATF. I did the oil change as well. And I think that was seven quarts of motor oil. Before I attempt to see if this drives, I'm going to check the brake fluid, make sure that's topped off just in case there's any issues. Looks like there's not much in there. It's a little bit in that front reservoir, nothing in the back. So I'm hoping the lines aren't leaking everywhere. One of the nice things about a Land Rover is the parking brake is on the drive shaft just after the transmission. So this is going to work even if your regular brakes failed. So if I have a problem with my brakes, I at least have this. Let's start it up, see what happens. Yeah, the regular brakes are barely holding me right now. definitely have issues with the regular brakes. It's stopping me. Oop, now it just went to the floor and I have nothing. So I wonder if I just blew a line. Let's try that again. Yeah, the, the brakes are going all the way to the floor now. Let's try the handbrake. Oh yeah, that stops real good. That's going to be it for today. It looks like next time I'll be looking at the brakes. Even though I can't drive the Land Rover on the street yet, I'm really glad that I don't have to push it around anymore. If you want to see more videos on this Land Rover Discovery, comment below and click subscribe.